We thank you for the things that you are doing. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Tell him, Lord, it gives us pleasure to know that we are not wasting our time. We bless the name of the Lord. Koinonia is a place of building where God is giving us wisdom that will last. There's nothing you're hearing tonight that will be a waste, I assure you. We are not exploring grounds that will be wasted. This is life. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him was all things created. There was nothing that was created outside him. Hallelujah. How many of you believe in what God is doing in your life? Let me tell you something. This will prepare you to reign in life. Are you listening to me? Many people are junking themselves with knowledge that will make them fools. Only the word of God can make you above. That word has been tested through time and dispensation. The immutability of his counsel. I don't care what it is that you learn and know in life. If you are not grounded upon the integrity of the word, there is a name for you. A failure. Hallelujah. The recession has broken the pride and the arrogance of men without God. It has proven once again that there is a God that sits in heaven. For God can take the foolish things and make great. If it were based on intellect and wisdom and the process of time, some of us would not have the opportunity to be declaring the count. But I love the way God is. He picks the things that are nothing and he fills it up with his spirit. Lord, I want, oh, Lord, I want to know, to know I want to offer a sacrifice of praise Fill this temple Lord, With your spirit Once again Oh Lord we want To know your glory We want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Feel this step, Lord, with your spirit once again. Hold your hands all over this building and begin to pray in tongues. Rapa kata bakata fregede belede boko sombra de kashalaba. Rakata bata bakata fregede belede boko so fregede belede bo zambra takaparia da balaraba. In you, O oh God, is the fountain of light, and in your light do we see light. Mambra sakata balada baka frata gede belede boko so fregede belede bo. Lambre pa shopra to zopra de kapalada bakata fregede belede boko do frakata bakasata. Go ahead and pray. You are men of the spirit. Zate kaparata pazende krezi kata labosh Zikete balada baka frede gede balada baka sabranda kataya Go ahead and pray in the spirit Zinde la kapras ke bariada balata kafrada kata beliarabai We have been made unto our God kings and priests And we shall reign in the earth Zibaraba shaprada gada balada dadadada Zembre te karata pakata fregede belede bosh 
Jete kaparia da ba zambria tala kapasita. Rakata pregede bela da bos, so pregede bela da bos. Zia da 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 bos, kam pregede bela da bos. Ze pregede bela da da bos, ke pregede bela da bos. Rakata ba 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 ba. Ze te frete kele bara da ba la kata pregede bela da bos. Ze prata bara da da bos, ke pregede bela da bos. Ze frete kele bara da bos, ke pregede bela da bos. Ze praka da bala da ba. Rakata ba 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 kata praka da bala da ba. Shaka pros kapar ne pres kape ke pras kapata kras segete lembri kata bala da ba da bos ke pros kata bala rakata pregere bela da bos koso pregere bela da bos lembra kata ba kata ba 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 ze kres ke ban de kriya shaka la kariara rakata bala da bos ke pregere bela da da bos rakata bala da bos kom pregere bela da bos shaka pregere bela da bos ke pregere bela da bos. Raga da bala da baga da baga da baga da baga da baga da bala bos. Bala bos ka praka ta baka ta praka da bala da bos. Raka ta baka ta praka da bala da baka da praka da bala da baka da praka da bala da bos. Raga da baka sha praka da bala da bos. Zanda praka da bala da bos. Zaka ta ka ta praka da bala bos. Keep praying. Zatu ka prons ke prene le kataria da bala da bos. Zige da bala da bos kam pras ka pareke te bala da bos. Blessed is the name of the Lord, the all-wise God, the fountain of wisdom. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was light, and that light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend. And God made two great lights, one to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night. The sons of Isaac had an understanding of the time and they knew what to do. Zedekete bala da ba, saparata praga da bala da ba, kembrege de bala da ba. Make sure you are praying all over this building. The power of God is here. Sata bala da ba, kapra de gere bala da ba. Energize your spirit, man. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Outside, make sure you are praying. Zata kapra salaba kapra gede bela de bos. Mam breka te ka te fe ka te bala da bas kam prataya rakata praga da bala da baga da praga da bala da bo shapro zakata rakata bara da bala da bas zeta ka prada ga da bala da baka si praga da bala da bo. Is the realm of your glory? Is the realm of your grace? I can feel your mighty power moving in this place. In the presence of angels, with God's glory on the wings, like the voice of mighty waters. I can hear the angels sing Holy, 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 Holy are you Lord We cry Holy, Holy Holy, 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 holy,
glory in the realm of your grace i can feel your mighty power it's moving in this place we're in the presence of angels with god's glory on the wings and like the voice of many waters i can hear the angels sing holy 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 we cry God's glory on the wings Like the voice of many waters I can hear the angels sing Holy, 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 holy Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosea, Hosanna to the mighty one. The lion of the tribe of Judah. We reverence you tonight in the spirit. For the things that you are doing in our lives. For your glory, for your power, for your grace and your majesty. Hallelujah. For the natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit. They are spiritually discerned. Father, we bless your name. Make sure you're blessing him.
My God, I give you praise. The presence of the Lord is mighty in this place. Victorious one, let the name of the Lord Jesus be exalted. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory and the honor. Tonight we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we praise. Make sure you sing it from your heart. For you are great, you the miracle. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You the miracle so great. There is no one else. I'm telling you, His presence is mighty in this place. There is no one else. You are, you are great. You do miracles. Miracles so great. There is no one else. There is no one else There is no one else like you There is no one else like you Lift your hands everyone The presence and the power of God is mighty in this place Lift your hands Worship his presence. Kabbalah Dabosh. The power of God will fall in a very mighty way from right now. Because I see the angel of the Lord's presence moving. Like the dew of heaven, it will fall upon you. Lift your hands like the rain of heaven, let it fall, let it fall. My God, such mighty presence. Hey, hey, hey. Just keep those hands lifted up. It's the dew of heaven. My body yeah, yeah, yeah. 
is the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Shirana Kapariya Kata. Rakata Balada Bakaba. Praise your over. I am that I am. She did it. You are the most high God. Just keep your hands lifted up. For his power and his glory is in this place. It's like the fire from heaven comes to ignite your spirit and put a passion for divine things in you. It's the fire from his throne. It's I tell you, there is a fire in this place. There is a fire in this place. Greater passion for the things of the spirit is an impartation of passion for divine things. An impartation of passion for spiritual realities. I worship you with all my heart, with all my heart. I worship you with all my heart, with all my heart. This is what this meeting is all about. And I am desperate for you. If you don't believe it, don't sing it. And I, and I, and I, I'm lost without you.
you one more time from your heart. Yeah. for the dealings of the spirit in this place how that you are guiding us through spiritual paths that will bring us to the realm of grace the realm of power the realm of exploits in the spirit that will be men of strength and power and structure Lord, I pray that you put like never before a hunger for spiritual things that will covet the reality of the realm of the spirit above and beyond anything that is in this realm. Just soak in the glory one minute. Let the instruments just play. Just let his presence rest upon you. Teaching you the art of worship. Thank you, Jesus. Moses said do not let us depart from here he said for how shall the people know we are separate except your presence go with us he said Lord do not let us depart from here there is a mystery of his majestic presence when the presence of the Lord comes upon a man you become a living wonder it's an aura of his presence it's an atmosphere of his glory that words cannot articulate every time i pray i pray that god will bring as many people into that realm where you will love his presence For I have found out that the presence of God is all you need. Men chase after vain things. But when you have his presence, you have all of it. When you have his presence, the Bible says, And the Lord walking with them. And their words were confirmed with signs following. And the Lord walking with them. This is not about grammar. This is not about stories. The Bible says, and when three Hebrew boys were thrown in the fire, a presence came with them. Presence. Lord, let your presence. So we bow as we enter the throne room. And we cast ourselves down at your feet, Lord. For you are holy, thou art holy. There is none like you. For in your presence, that is where I must be. Lord, I bow as I enter the throne room. Lord, I cast myself down at your feet, Lord. 
For you are holy, you are holy, there is none like you, for in your presence, that is where we must be. In your presence, that is where I must be. It's in your presence that is where it's in your glory that is where it's in your shakina that is where that is where in your presence that is where it's in your glory that is where in your presence that is where i must be now arise oh lord and come to your resting place you and the ark of your mind and then we will rejoice as we're clothed in your righteousness we celebrate your life blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes. Oh, his mighty presence is in this place. Blessed are you, for you come in the name of our God. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. I hail you, most high. I truly hail you, most high. Hello, Tim Madonna. Elohim Madonna, Elohim Madonna, Elohim Madonna, Elohim Madonna, Elohim Madonna. This majestic presence, when that presence mantles you, it makes you a sign and a wonder. For there is a fire that comes from his presence. No demon can stand that fire, no devil can stand that fire. Infirmity cannot stand it. That's the place where true faith is incubated. Thank you for your presence. 
Thank you for your presence. If the Lord had not been on my side, now may Israel sing. Go ahead and sing in the spirit. Find melodies of the spirit. You're becoming mighty men and women of the spirit. Your blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be your blessing and honor, glory and power forever. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Most High. Thank you for your presence. No matter how hardened your heart is, you cannot stand this majestic presence of God. No matter how much of a stony heart you have, when his true presence shows up, smashes the stony heart, the Bible says, the mountains keep like lambs before him. Who is this God whose glorious and majestic presence can break the rocks into pieces? Lord, let every stony heart become a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. Many of you may not realize why we take our time to press into his presence. There is a mystery of God's presence that the body of Christ has forgotten. This is not just about prayer. This is about understanding how to step into his presence. The presence of the Lord comes upon you. For you are glorious. And worthy to be praised, you are the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you I lift my hands in praise, you are the Lamb upon the throne. This is not a special number. You are glory. Listen to what you are saying. And you are worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne. And on to you, I lift my hands in praise. You are the Lamb. Listen, if you do not love God and have a passion for him beyond your needs, beyond your life, beyond your ambition, beyond your schooling, 
let me tell you something you will never taste of the blessings and the glory of God for he will screen your heart until he becomes king of kings and lord of lords whatever else you put there he said lovest thou me more than this I know you love me but why have other things taken my place lovest thou when they saw the miracles and the manifestations and the mighty things that Jesus did, they came and they wanted to make him king. Ask them, he said, lovest thou me? We have seen the miracles and the wonderful things God is doing in this place. But tonight, can you lay aside for a minute your hunger for healing or for a miracle in your life or for a breakthrough and just say, Lord, I worship you for who you are just for who you are I know that I desire a miracle but tonight I'm not tying my worship to anything I'm just looking for ways to express that you are good I'm looking for ways to express that you are good can you bless him because he has been faithful Bless him. Make sure you are blessing him in one minute. This is what we are here for. Please bless him. Bless him in one minute. I know why I'm asking you to do these things. We are responding according to the things that are happening in the spirit. into something in the spirit you may not understand why we are worshiping for thus saith the Lord of hosts yet once it is a while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake the nations and the desire of nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory saith the Lord of hosts the silver is mine and the gold is mine saith the Lord of hosts and the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord. Hallelujah.
I was praying for tonight's meeting and the hand of the Lord came upon me and in the spirit I saw a writing the season of reward and I just kept quiet and I was watching and the Lord told me he said announce to my people that they are stepping into prophetic seasons of harvest consolation and a reward a reward for labor in the spirit a reward for traveling defying yourself with the things you should chase after and I saw seasons of reward and the Lord gave me this scripture he says I will fill this house with my glory and the glory of the latter house shall far exceed far exceed let me tell you something in this season we are entering God is about to use your life and prove to men that it's not a waste to pursue God that's why when I came up I told you everything that is not of God is a waste are you listening to me that's why you see me singing songs of thanks I know the things that the Lord has shown me and my job tonight is to direct us in the spirit into this blessing this is not something that one or two people will just stand and testify on behalf of the house that everyone will have a personal testimony oftentimes when you begin to walk with the lord after you travel and show him that you love him more than the things people are looking for he tells you to stand still and he brings the other things that men chase after and say i give you as a reward as a symbol of your staying in my presence this is why I began to talk about God's presence. <speaking in Spanish> of you believe what I'm saying because when people hear words like this it falls on different kinds of soils and the Bible says that the prophet said by this time tomorrow and someone dare to meander and come out and say even if the windows of heaven were open and he said you will see it so that you can confirm that God does not lie but you will not eat of it the Bible says they had the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith let me tell you something that the word of god is declared does not mean it will happen automatically in your heart when it comes upon your heart and you take it and believe it as the word from god it says believe in the lord and you shall be established but he said believe in his prophets the oracles that he uses to declare his counsel unto the people and he said therein you shall prosper I bring you the word of the Lord tonight, Koinonia. We are entering a prophetic season of anointing for the house it has started. There is a new season of glory. It's, it's an opening and it took him from the east side. The Bible says that the river began to flow and he measured a thousand cubits. These are realms and dimensions of operations in the spirit. When God measures for you a thousand cubits and you walk in that level of the anointing and you are faithful and you are diligent, then another thousand cubits is measured and he said the river rose down to my waist and he measured another thousand cubits and it was to my chest and then it became a river Kapota shalakata. it became a river and the bible says wherever that water went the fish that was dead came alive listen there are some things that are not possible at certain realms of anointings when you prove faithful to god what happens is a thousand cubits the measurement of the works of men how meticulous have you followed the plan to pattern the bible says he measured a thousand cubits and he told me now you can go deeper let me tell you glory has been opened over this house and God is bringing us as a house and as a family of faith into a new dimension of power and of the miraculous he said this is a season of supernatural exploits and many of you are yet to see that dimension in its fullness but I tell you the spirit of God is beginning some prophetic works you will see the miraculous the manifestation of God's grace you will see the manifestation of prosperity and the 
wealth and the blessings and the favor and the increase of God is already happening. It will happen by the hand of God. That's why I told you, forget about the junks that people say. Jacob, have I loved? Esau, have I hated? Let me tell you something. It's not about gymnastics. When you stay with God and stay on course, the Bible says the people began to move, but Jesus retreated. They were six hours ahead. At the end of it, he got up and started walking on the water. There will be an acceleration of the spirit. Many of you will see acceleration because you left some things behind to pursue God. He said, forget about them. You will find them in your future. God is in this season about to take sacrifices, things you would have done if you were not pursuing God. Some of you would have been in relationships if not because of your pursuit for God. Certain financial realms, but in this prophetic season, God is taking the things that are behind you because you have set your face like a flint. He's taking the things that are behind and bringing it before you. The Bible says, I will do a work in your days that even if it were told you, you would not believe. This is the season we are stepping into. He said, I will do a work. A work that will cause your ears to tingle. Blessings that will come into your life that will make you cry for days. You will leave the blessing alone and be crying. And be saying, what minutes these things, oh Lord? And the Lord will tell you, this is what I mean. When I say, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all other things, influence, power. Let me tell you something. You will see influence in this house and in the lives of individuals. You know why? The Bible says, if I be lifted up, not a man of God, not a doctrine, not a sect. And I tell you that we have lifted Christ in this place. As a result, he said, I will draw all men to myself. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. This is what the Lord is doing in our lives. Hallelujah. This is why many of you do not understand why there has been a season of rapid deliverances because of the strongholds and the works of darkness that are standing to contend against the breakthroughs of people. But tonight we are going to pray and we will stand in partnership with what the spirit is doing. The Bible says when you pray, say, let it be done in the earth as we have seen happen in the heavens. And so God reveals to us by prophecy the things that are resident in the realm of the spirit and in the place of prayer we agree with heaven and say amen. For it is the spirit in partnership with the bride that tells the world to come and when the word comes it becomes flesh and it is made manifest in the midst of people we call koinonia a place of partnership and intimacy i tell you rejoice because you are god is about to use your life to prove men that have mocked your god in your family in your life you will see acceleration believe the word of the lord believe the word of the lord this is what god is doing in this season you will see men walk in levels of glory. Men like God. And they looked at them and said, The gods have come unto us. Hallelujah. I bring you a word of the Lord. He said, Fear not, I have redeemed you. Isaiah 43. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the fire, I will be with you. When you walk through the water. For many of you, you are about to enter seasons of grace and glory. Aha. Uh -huh. He said, and after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will restore us. This is what is happening. And many come, where is their God? Upon Mount Zion, let me tell you what has been happening. The Bible says when that season comes in Mount Zion, the first thing that will happen is that there will be deliverance and holiness. And that's what has been happening to us in the last weeks. Immediately after that, the children of Jacob will begin to possess their body. Written in the word. It's a pattern in the spirit that every time God wants to bring people into their prophetic destiny and into their inheritance in light, there will be deliverance and holiness. And after which the sons of Jacob why the sons of Jacob? Because Jacob was a man of his presence. He said, I will not let you go. And he wrestled with that man in the night. So tonight I bring you a word. We are entering seasons of reward. I believe it with all my heart. Many of you have not seen a man who looks like a portrait 
of the blessings of the Lord. You have seen people who God blessed from jobs. You have seen people who God blessed from crooks and pranks and all of this. But wait and see. God will use you and show you. You will be a portrait of a man that the Lord has blessed. Isaiah 51. It says, God called Abraham. Let's turn there. Believe in what God is doing. Tonight is a prophetic meeting. God is opening doors, opening portals, opening things in the spirit. Are you there? Verse 2. Isaiah 51 verse 2. Look unto Abraham. What happened to him? Thy father and to Sarah who bore thee. He said, I called him alone and I blessed him. Who blessed him? He said, I called him. I called him alone, not as a crowd. Tonight, God is calling men alone. This is not the issue of me and my roommate. Your personal faithfulness over the things of God. The Bible says, and one day the book of remembrance was opened over Mordecai. And the king could not sleep. He said, bring me the chronicles. And when it was opened, he said, this man has been faithful in this kingdom. This was an adumbration of how seasons of remembrance happens in the spirit. It doesn't happen every day the way men of God teach. It's a lie. But there is a time, a kairos moment. For the Bible says, if the cloud be full of rain, your daily obedience. That's why the Bible says, walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. You will see a man who has been locked up and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Can I tell you something? When the light of God comes upon your life, even you will be afraid of yourself. I know what it means for God to pick a man who is nothing. And when he has your heart, he said, My son, give me your heart. Except the Lord builds a house. He said he built it in vain. He didn't say the house will not be built. But it's in vain. And except the Lord watches over the city. He said it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep in the night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep. Can I tell you something brothers and sisters? God is bringing us into a level and a measure of rest. As a ministry and as individuals. When the Lord showed me this I was excited. I was singing. I was dancing. I was praying because every time God shows you a thing in the spirit. The way you respond is by praise and thanksgiving. Are you listening to me? Judges, quickly. Judges 1. Let me show you something there. Praise is the recipient of spiritual things. Every time God promises you something, every time God tells you you are stepping into a season of blessing, that's the time to engage prophetic praise. Judges 1. Who is there? Judges 1. Read verse 1 to 3. Anybody? Someone read with the mic, please. All right, let's just read here. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall be the first to go for us against the Canaanites? They were entering Canaan, they had seen it. Hallelujah. But who is going to lead the way? For them to enter into this prophetic destiny and they asked the lord they said lord how shall we receive this prophecy you have given us and he told them he said judah shall go up judah means praise in other words it is with your praise let praise lead the way as you step into that prophetic time he said for indeed i have delivered the land into his hand not into the hands of the israelites into the hands of judah are you listening to me so every time 
you are entering a prophetic season that's the time to praise him this is why we are praising him many of you do not know what we are doing rejoicing and saying lord we count you faithful it says judah shall go up for indeed i have delivered the land into his hands i have delivered the land into his hands and judah means praise hallelujah praise is not just about singing and dancing it's about acknowledging the power the superiority the grace of god that god is able the bible says in hebrews 11 verse 6 it says for without faith it is impossible to please god for he that cometh unto him must believe are you persuaded that god is able for i have read in my bible how that a whole land was dying of famine and in 24 hours katokabaya and god used weak men lepers that say why we sit we here and perish the bible says when they were moving god accelerated their effort so that they had the sound of chariots and when it was time the bible says in the book of chronicles that the prophet said believe in the lord and you shall be established believe in his prophets and you shall prosper and the bible says how that the worshippers were put in front and when they began to sing there was confusion in the camp of the enemy they began to kill themselves i believe in what god is doing please do not be part of those who will see and not step in i declare this word because i want all of us to believe it and know that there is a consolation the kingdom of god works in a reward system if god does not reward men he's a wicked god every king in ancient times had times when he would step out and show his benevolence to the citizens and every time you praise a king you compel him to repeat what he did that made you praise him hallelujah are you listening to me i bring you the word of the lord koinonia we are stepping into a fearful season you will see the power of the holy ghost god will orchestrate events when god wants to destroy your life he will send a man i mean when satan wants to destroy your life he will send a man when god wants to destroy to bless you he will also send a man if you will hear my voice tonight and believe that i'm bringing you the counsel of the lord you will be surprised the bible says when again the lord turned again our captivity we were like them that dream and so our mouths were filled with laughter and the hiddens tested they said the lord has done great things for them he said turn aside our captivities as the streams in the negev it's a season where we are stepping into prophetic blessings so men will see that there is a system in god God does not want to call you and just make you a broke failure. He doesn't just want to call you into ministry and keep you frustrated. But he says, son, what I want is to first have your heart. There is a Chinese tree that is popularly said when you plant it for about three years, it will just be digging down and it won't grow. But within six months in the third or fourth year, it will suddenly grow and become so tall this is what is going to happen to many people because the bible says the remnant of the house of jacob shall bear root downwards this is what we have been doing laboring in the spirit many of you have been given god has given you dangerous instructions empty your account you have done it and you are suffering you thought the miracle will come immediately it didn't come yet you said god you are faithful god said you are doing this to me you are showing me that you can do this Many of you, some of you who are students, God's scholarship, you carried everything and gave. And God said, you are doing this to me. You can't outgive me. If you outgive God, he stops being God. So every time you give to God, you provoke a dimension. And God said, I will set a new standard and let you know that I am God. We have many workers in this ministry that work tirelessly day and night. The worship team, the ushers, the protocol in the rain. I bring you a prophetic word. Koinonia, you are entering a season of reward. 
the chronicles is open over us tonight and God is going to begin to reward men. You will see fearful testimonies here. Men will come what others have been chasing for for years. Somebody will just come and give it to you. The Bible says Gentiles shall come to thy light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. He says your gates shall continually be open. To receive the forces of the Gentiles. I receive this word. I know that is the word from the Lord. It will change people. We are stepping into a level of anointing. You will see things happen at the frequency of grace that will make you afraid. Inexplainable but undeniable. Inexplainable but undeniable. This is what happens when the grace of God comes upon a man. You cannot explain what is the mathematics behind this success. There is a hand and the Lord walking with them. And the Lord walking with them. I announce to you it's a season of exploits. This is the word from God. Believe it in your job. Believe it in your life. Ideas will come by the spirit. You are not fasting. You are not praying. It just comes. God brings it to you. Hallelujah. shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted and all the nations will flow through it sometimes when I look at some people who come for koinonia I know that if they were given an invitation card no invitation card can bring this kind of people you see them come and you know something brought them the power and the grace of God hallelujah now is the time to forget about what who is saying about you or what your neighbor is saying this your roommates are saying you are always praying you are, hold on the day god blesses you they will ask you that they want to be filled with the holy spirit there are many ways god publicizes himself one of it is that god blesses you in such a way that will make your enemies angry god has a system package that he does that when he blesses you you say lord to you be all the glory and you will see how attractive your christianity is we're going to rise up and pray this is the word i brought for you tonight the word of the lord to the house of god i bring you a word where i step this thing i'm talking about will start days from now i'm not talking about months and weeks see the bible says amos 3 verse 9 he said the lord will not do anything but reveal his counsel to his servants the prophets days from now you will see all inspiring fearful dimensions of the anointing fearful dimensions of grace i saw great criticism coming from people who are saying how is this thing happening but this is not new this is why he prepares you before the blessing because it takes stamina to sustain the blessing hallelujah you will see men step into levels of grace miracles and healings that you cannot explain even you will not be able to account for it the power and the hand of god favor coming solomon was not asking the queen of sheba just got up packaged herself packaged all the gifts traveled all the journey and came to meet a man to bless him when the hand of god is upon you you become a sign and a wonder how many of you are ready to pray tonight? I believe this. If you are doubting tonight, I'd like you to throw away that doubt. God is bigger than you. I believe in the word of the Lord. Manifestations of grace. You will see products of God's grace that will make people afraid. Believe me when I say this. There have been times in my life when I've made audacious statements like this. And then when the blessing comes, you will see for the bible says that which i tell you in the secret place declare thou on the mountain top it will happen by the power of the holy spirit there are angels already released to this effect and i truly believe with all my heart that this is a personal affair the bible says i call abraham alone and blessed him many of you will hear testimonies from your parents your father is not supposed to reach certain levels. They just call him and the people who ask, they say, what is your business? Hallelujah. 
Before we pray, one parable that Jesus gave. I've shared it again and again in this place. The Bible talks about a husband man who woke up in the morning and he met certain people. And he told them, he said, come and dress my vine. And they said, we'll do it only if we have an agreement with you. Are you listening to me? I said something some years ago. And I received some dangerous criticisms from it. Dangerous criticism. I said it that the concept of what we call in the body of Christ covenant is wrong. A man can really not enter a covenant with God. Let me tell you the truth. Because one minute later you have broken your own part. And in a covenant there is no mercy. Go and ask the traditional rulers in your village. A, a, a covenant is put to be able to commit the highest integrity of those who are at work. But man in his nature is flawed. The best of man's righteousness is flawed. So God comes in the morning and meets those people. They say, Lord, we are going to work for you only if we have an agreement. God said, you are not coming because you love me. He said, fine, go to the farm. Later in the afternoon, he met certain people again. And he said, come, there was no agreement. They came because they loved him to the 11th hour. 11 hours. Some other people had been working for 11 hours. And someone just comes at the 11th hour. And he said, why are you sitting here? He said, no man will bring us into the vineyard. He said, come. And the Bible says, when he started paying them, those who made agreement, he went to them. He said, we agreed for a denary. Take. Those who did not agree, he said, now, since you entered the farm, not staking your life, I would have told you thank you and you would have still be grateful. Now, let me pay you by my own standard. And the Bible says he paid them the same denary and he made them angry. Your blessing is going to annoy some people because they will not understand. They are saying, come on, God, this is not fair. I got first class. I got this and that. My father is this. God says, Jacob, have I loved? Esau, have I hated? If you are angry, ask God what is happening in this season huh. for I have seen a mystery and this is what I announced it by the spirit that this is what will happen those who call themselves princes are going to be walking suddenly we who are servants God will carry us and put us on horses the Bible says I see a mystery it's a mystery because it shouldn't be so Princes should be the ones walking on horses and servants pushing them. But he said in the realm of the spirit, I will reverse it. All those who think they are the gods of themselves, they will walk while some servants will ride on horses. I believe the word of the Lord and I bring you the word of the Lord. We are going to pray. You are going to release this word by faith. The Bible says we having the same spirit of faith as it is written. I believe and so I speak. We also believe and therefore we speak. Listen, you're going to apply this in any, every area of your life. And cry like a priest. And say, Lord, every part of my life will experience this prophetic word. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you the truth, brothers and sisters. When a woman is pregnant, look at me. Because of that pregnancy, I wanted to hold a man. You're a man, Mr. Man. Forget about the madness that happens in America. When a woman is pregnant, temporarily it will, it will, it will spoil her posture, correct? She may be spitting here and there. But forget about it. She's still waiting. Other women will look at her and say, ah, and this lady used to be fine. Oh, what is this? See how her face is. It's none of your business. She's carrying something. The day she gives birth, even her enemies will visit her with, with food. But the Bible says, as soon as Zion travails, this is what you have been doing. There has been a traveling in the place of prayer, in the place of discipline. The unbelieving guy came. He said, just say yes to me. Let me change your story. He said, carry your story and go away. I don't want it. There is a story that comes from God. God said, you did this to me? Okay, hold on. I'm about to bring somebody. You prayed and said, oh Lord, whether the guy is blessed or not, let him just be godly. God said, I will give you double, double. You know that song they sing, double, double. God said, what is wrong with finding somebody that is anointed and blessed? Come on, brothers. You are not praying in tongues for nothing. The Bible says a time will come. This proverb will no longer be said in Israel. I prophesy to the brothers some proverbs over your life. That guy, this brother is so broke. It's just like he loves God. Some proverbs will be extinct forever. 
You have been coming with your one sandal. You say, Lord, I will polish it and pray in tongues. Your prayer has torn your shirt. You sewed it again. It tore it. You sewed it again. You hold on and see. God will stop someone from sleeping in the night. Who say, my son is in need of something. He said, Gentiles shall come. See, I'm not motivating you tonight. I don't do that. I'm bringing you the counsel of the Lord. Hallelujah. And ladies, let me tell you something. You should pray like never before. You know why? Because in the realm of the spirit, a woman is the only gate through which another life comes into this realm. Are you listening to me? Women are gates in the realm of the spirit. You go to a ministry, you don't find women there run away. There's big trouble. Because every time God is about to birth something in a season, you will see a multiplication of women. When Jesus died, all the men ran away. It was the women that summoned courage. They were gates in the spirit. The Bible calls them the wailing women. You go and look outside and see the number of ladies that had been coming. No invitation. You were moving alone. God just brought you. It's not because you just came. You are aligning yourself with prophecy. I bring you a prophetic word, Koinonia. Do you not read the handwritings on the wall? There is a season we are entering. God is connecting you with those who need your gifts. God bless you. Remember our teaching on destiny help us. Many of you are at the level you are now. All you need is somebody who needs your gift. I tell you the truth. The wine presser had access to the king but did not have the ability to interpret dreams. Joseph had potential but no access to the king. But when Joseph and the wine presser met, the Bible says the king sent for Joseph. They shaved him and he came out of his dungeon. I prophesy to you that in this season, God is bringing someone. God will announce your gift. God will take you to a place that only your gift will be needed. I prophesy to you by the unction of the Lord. Listen. It is only the process of God's dealings that take time. The coming of the blessing does not take time. It is the dealing. It will happen in one day. It will happen in one day. Joseph sleeps as a prisoner. Wakes up the next day. The guy shaving him did not know he was shaving the prime minister. He would have said, as I'm shaving you, remember me. Some of you are seeing the person by your side. You are seeing him shouting. Saliva is pouring from his mouth as he's praying. Forget the saliva. Sorry if he's pause on you. But let me tell you, when God begins to bless men and women in this house, mark my word, it will make you afraid. There are some of you here, you left certain lifestyles because you wanted to come to God. And that your allegiance to God has been punishing you because you have to align to some things. I bring you a word from the Lord. Though weeping and just for a night, my Bible tells me that joy comes with the morning. How many of you have been tired of waking up one night? You just don't want to stay. You are praying that morning should come. And then suddenly you will sleep and wake up and see it's 8 o'clock. The morning had come long. Your morning will come in a glorious and glamorous way. That God will prove it. And I believe that God is visiting families in a dramatic way. Go and send text messages to your loved ones and tell them this is the prophetic word. We are connecting you. This is not just healing of HIV and this. Thank God for those things. But let me tell you, an angel is measuring a thousand cubits over Koinonia. He's saying you have been faithful in this. Move deeper. And we will bring strangers. The Bible says strangers shall feed your flock. Where you will see somebody will come and say, you don't know me. You don't need to know me. I'm sponsoring, transporting people for the whole of this year. Don't announce it. Things will happen that will amaze you. Make sure you are lying in the flow. Are you ready to pray? Pair yourselves into two. Quickly, please rise up. Instrumentalists help me. Pair yourselves into two because we are going to pray. Please, if you are holding him, a lazy person and is not praying, leave him alone. Leave him and hold somebody that will help you get to where your destiny is. Lift your voice like a saint and begin to pray. 
Rakata balada bakata balada ba. Hold the person's hands. Rekete kalabara. Sheeda Maria da da ba. Lord, we take your word. We take your word. It's a season of reward for the house of Koinonia. We believe your word. You are not a man that you should lie. Days from now. Days from now. Days from now. The cloud is full of rain. The cloud is full of rain. And there will be a heavy downpour upon sons and daughters until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine and the fruitful vine for a forest. Pray. Divine acceleration. Prosperity. Financial prosperity. Happening days from now. Financial prosperity. A reign of wealth. I tell you, by the Spirit of God. New levels of grace. New levels of grace. New levels of grace. Who are thou mountain? For Zerubbabel, thou shalt become plain at the shout of grace, 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 grace. Goto so tekete, rekete rekeposha. In your academic, grace, grace to run like Elijah. In your job, grace, 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 grace. In your career, the grace of the Lord. Step into visions, step into dreams, joy overflowing in the name of Jesus. Your days of discouragement are over. Your days of mourning are over. As a servant of the Lord, I bring those days to an end. I interrupt your life with a prophetic word. Arise, shine, arise, shine, arise, shine, arise, shine. The glory of the Lord is upon you. 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 Mount up with wings as eagles. Mount up with wings as eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. They that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish like the cedars of Lebanon. They that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish. Hallelujah. Mark my word. This will happen days from now. It will be an avalanche. Not on a few. Not on a few. Prosperity is coming. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. New levels of anointing. I hear the sound. Scrolls are being opened in the spirit portals of favor portals of grace we shout grace we shout grace at the shout of grace koinonia grace unto you koinonia grace unto you grace and peace be multiplied to you grace and peace move at the speed of grace Beyond what you walk for, beyond your connection, beyond who you know, I bring families out of dungeons of failure, dungeons of poverty. Let the book of remembrance be opened over families. Let the book of remembrance be opened for your faithfulness. Let the book of remembrance be opened for your diligence. Let the book of remembrance open for thou O Lord at a shield for us for thou O Lord at a shield for us for our 
glory shall lift her up of her head, and my head shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and my head shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and my head shall thou exalt, shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul and guides me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy Lord and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness, mercy, prosperity, influence, increase, grace, glory, honor, first place. Follow me. I pray, take it, take it, brother. Come on, pray. Just for one more minute. Just for one more minute. I take it, oh God. I take it, oh God. I believe your word. I position my spirit. I open the door. I am the children that the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel. Before you this day, blessing and cursing. I said before you this day, life and death. But I advise you choose life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. I just want us to sing one song. Just one song. As a sincere cry. Lord, step in. Do the impossible. Oh, yes. Come on, provoke the hand of God. Change the story of families. Break through. Break through. Let there be a ray of prophetic breakthrough. Overnight miracles. By the power of God. Sing it as I prophesy to you. I speak as the servant of God. Under the abundance of praise that have been given. Let every door that has been closed over your life. I command gates. I command doors. Be open. Let the windows of heaven. The windows of abundance. The windows of grace. The windows of influence. The windows of peace. The windows of power. The windows of speed. I provoke it to your spirit. Sing it from your heart. Sing it from your heart. Lord, step in. Lord, step in. In the lives of people. Ideas. Connections. Praise. Praise. One more time. One more time. hold our hands as a family of faith lift it up to God we are agreeing we are saying Lord step in God is not a man that you should lie lift it as high above your head we are going to sing this song together are you ready now Lord step in as a family of faith my God let there be a rain of breakthrough prophetic seasons of abundance, prophetic season of increase, wipe the tears of famine, change stories overnight. Koinonia is a new season. 
hands lifted up. My God and my King, I pray. I did not call myself, you have called me. And you gave me a revelation of this word. The Bible says, Bless ye the Lord, the angels who excel in strength. The Bible says, Who confirmed the words of his messengers. Please keep the hands lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prophesy. Lord God of Israel. It was like this many years ago. When our father Solomon stood in front of that temple. And on behalf of the nation of Israel he cried unto you. My God I pray. As a family of faith. For we are serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. He died and he rose. Just sing it one more time. I am serving a living God. His name. He died and he above all names I lay my hands upon this holy ground and I declare on behalf of the people you have called you are the head of this ministry my God I declare that every door that is closed over anyone here and any family here as sure as the Lord lives, let that door be open this night. Oh God of Zion, hear your people speedily. Let there be a dispatch of angels. In the name of Jesus, we release angels to homes by the word of the Lord. We release finance angels. Amen. We release breakthrough angels. Amen. We release angels of deliverance. Amen. We release angels of wisdom. Amen. We release angels of grace. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I prophesy to you, grace, Amen. grace, Amen. great grace upon you. Great grace upon you. Without sweat, begin to enter some dimensions. Without sweat, enter some levels. I call forth your destiny helpers from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I provoke a connection. My God, you are called the father of spirits. Connect your people to those who need their gifts. I command visions. I command ideas. I open doors of opportunities. May you see revelations in the night. May the angels of the Lord visit you. May they give you ideas. May the kings of your destiny look for you and bring you out, the, out of the dungeons of your life. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Academic breakthrough. Marital breakthrough. Breakthrough in your academics. Spiritual breakthrough. Career breakthrough. Your days of waiting are over. As the servant of God, I declare that let your steps be like that of chariots. Let the wealth of the wicked that has been laid for the righteous, let it find itself to your hands. 
Gentiles come to your light. Kings to the brightness of your rising. Where you have been deserted so that no man goes through you. I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Be exalted because you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even our God, tonight may he anoint you with an oil of gladness above your failures. Rise to a new level in the name of Jesus. I declare, whatever has made you cry, behold a new season of laughter. I prophesy it to you. Behold a new season of laughter. The Egyptians that you see today, I declare by the unction of the mighty one that you will see them no more forever. And may the Lord give you a new name. Let Jacob be changed to Isaac. Let Abraham be changed to Abraham. Let Sarai be called Sarah. Let Cephas become Peter. Let Saul become Paul. The Bible says, For he that endures to the end, he shall be given a crown and a white stone. I call your season of abundance. Tonight in the heavens, let the book of remembrance be opened. And let the days of your faithfulness be replayed before the presence of his majesty. Let the times of your prayer and fasting rise up as a sweet smelling sour. My God, visit your people. Let the old proverbs be a thing of the past in your life. The Bible says a time will come that proverb will no longer be used in Israel. I set you free from everything that has limited you. Amen. You are unlimited. Amen. I set you free Amen. by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fire of the Holy Ghost consumes everything that attempts to limit your destiny. Amen. I deliver you from inferiority complex. Amen. That demonic voice that tells you you cannot make it. Whose report will you believe tonight? I bring you a word. Rise up, thou champion of God. I speak to your spirit. Rise up from the dust. I command your spirit. Rise up for you are not weak. I send you a word of prophecy. It says, and the spirit entered me. And the spirit entered me. When he spake unto me. And set me upon my feet. Where your destiny has been tied down. So that you will not arise. As the star rose when Jesus was born. Let a star rise above you. And call wise men to your tabernacle. Whatever has covered your glory. And has shielded you. In the name that is above all names. I declare. That that light and that veil, let it be taken from your eyes. All the opportunities you've been, you've lost in the past. I stand mistakes of the past. Whatever it is, I pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy to you. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For tonight the Lord is doing a new thing. Tonight the Lord is doing a new thing. He will make a way for you where there is no way. For those of you who have fallen, the Bible says, is there hope for a tree though it be cut down? I bring you a word tonight. Listen, it says there is hope for a tree though it be cut down. At the scent of water, there are some of you here, you have dreams and you started walking on it, but things happened and you fell back again. And the devil spoke lies to you. I bring you a word tonight. The Bible says in the book of Amos that a lion eats up a sheep to the point that there is only an ear and two legs. Yet the shepherd runs after that lion and recovers that ear and two legs. What will you do with an ear and two legs? The lion has eaten the whole animal, but the shepherd still ran. Let me tell you, the miracle is not in what you have lost. The miracle is in what you have left. For if you will give thanks with it, like five loaves and two fish, you will lift it up. Let me tell you, there will be multiplication. For this is the season of multiplication. Hear the word of the Lord. You are not small. 
you are great he made you so you may come from a small village but you are great you may not be able to speak english but the hand of god is upon you men have called you names you may be staying in a hut you came here not eating but i bring you a prophecy enjoy these days because they are going forever you will never see them again the psalmist says since I was young now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken even if it looks like you are forsaken calm down God is never too late behold he comes the Bible says and the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings I bring a word of comfort to someone as we round up it's not over hear me I prophesy to you you can start again it doesn't matter what has happened in your life I don't care what has happened in your family it doesn't matter how bad it is my brother you may have been drinking and smoking you are struggling you are with God you are not with God let no man condemn you tonight there is strength for you and I command the Bible says and they told the prophet they said where we meet with you is too small let us go to the Jordan and then the axe head fell and the prophet said where did it fall I command miracles that you cannot explain and the woman who lost her son in name the bible says they were already going to go and bury that child suddenly Jesus stepped on the way many of you are about to close some chapters but Jesus is holding it back he's saying who is asking you to close it for who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not instructed are you hearing me tonight I'm prophesying to you and the Bible saw them and Jesus saw them and said bring back and he brought him back to life three significant death incidences in the Bible the first one the child just died and Jesus came to him and looked came to the lady and said Talita Kumi girl I say unto you arise who is God speaking tonight God is speaking to some people tonight there are some of you that this is all the prophecy you need tonight. Talita kumi to your spiritual life. Talita kumi to your finance, to your self-worth. Talita kumi. I prophesy to you arise. I prophesy to you arise. And the Bible says Lazarus was sick. And when he was sick, Jesus said it is not unto death. There are some of you, you were going through certain challenges and God told you it will be better. But it did not get better. It went worse. And the Bible says, and Lazarus died for four days. And Jesus said, do you not know that I am not just the one who heals. I am also the resurrection. Son of man, what seest thou? He said, an almond tree. He said, you have seen correct. Right, we see correctly. God is restoring dreams. And shattered lives. Tonight, I'm going to make a very special altar call. All of you listen to me. There is, a, there is an anointing for restoration. The beginner's anointing is coming on some, some people. For some of you, God is not opening new chapters. He's giving you a new book entirely. Listen to me. This is, this is not just, there are two altar calls here tonight. The first, please don't just be emotional. Hallelujah. I'm talking about those, before we take those who are not born again. You are born again, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't just come being emotional. You know, you know that for some reason in your life, you have found yourself struggling at the same spot, at the same level. I'm not just, I know we are oppressed. There are some people for some of you it's your family you know this is you know what I'm saying the same cycle the same spot spiritually and otherwise please I'd like you to lift your hands let me see how many people run out here quickly please very quickly we just have three minutes to do everything we have to do please don't just be emotional don't be emotional and just come out there are some people just stand come near come near come near to the extreme don't be ashamed this is a school this is a prophetic place God is wiping someone's tears tonight believe me 
every time you are in trouble God sends a prophetic word when he sends a prophetic word it can change your story in one day hallelujah all of you that are standing if there's no space just stand there just stand there outside just stand in faith faith is the most important thing listen some of you have struggled in the same spot for years you would have been far ahead of you love the lord for some of you is your mistakes some of you is your carelessness whatever it is it does not matter i bring you a word tonight no man condemns you are you listening to me there is that precious blood that flows from emmanuel vein and is going to speak mercy for you lift your hands i want to prophesy and curse whatever legal hold that satan has over your life and destiny that is keeping you where you are hallelujah i like you to shout amen when i ask you to like your life depends on it you just need to believe some of you will be looking at me it will look like magic see when a servant of god stands he can change your story with the anointing of the holy spirit i don't know the stories that are represented here but tonight i tell you there is one who is mightier than i some of you are supposed to have been married some of you are supposed to have left some levels you are intelligent you are bright you are brilliant but tonight i'm praying for you lift your hands my god in the name of the lord jesus christ satan take your hands come out of her now come out now out of her this lady has been tied i release you tonight now tonight is a night of breakthrough your destiny must open up lift your hands please as I make this pronouncement some of you will see visions of things happening immediately hallelujah I'm going to shout be open that's the instruction God gives me as I make that shout some of you will literally feel something leaving you and that will be the end of it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be open opened close destinies be open be open be open be open breakthrough I release breakthrough receive breakthrough in your marriage breakthrough every limitation before you i burn it to ashes now in the name of jesus doors open for you gates open for you run with the spirit of elijah i'd like you to go back to your seat rejoicing a miracle has happened to you come on celebrate jesus Many of you will come back with testimonies of the fearful hand of God. Now very quickly, we've taken so much time. You've never given your heart to the Lord. Look at me please. Inside and outside, listen. You've never given your heart to the Lord. You've not made a decision for Jesus. You may be a nice person, but you've not opened up your heart to receive salvation. Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but because of the cares of this life, you have found yourself derailing. Please, everybody stand. We're rounding up. Everybody stand up. Please, wherever you are, tonight a new beginning starts for you. My brother and my sister outside, leave your seat and come right now. Jesus is calling you. Koinonia, begin to clap for them as they come. I know that there are people. Don't be ashamed of anyone. God is giving you a new beginning. Inside and outside. You've never made a decision for Jesus. Or you've made a decision for Jesus. And you found yourself derailing. They are coming. Keep appreciating them. There are some of you here. Don't be ashamed. Don't let your friends stop you. 
it's a new beginning welcome home welcome home it's a new beginning there are still some people outside the lord is showing me the devil is a liar he cannot hold your destiny to ransom you have cried alone but tonight god is giving you a new beginning i still see a few people outside the lord is giving me words about people outside don't remain there the lord is still calling people hallelujah look at me this is the best decision you would have made in your life for the bible says any man who comes to him he will in no wise cast away lift your hands to heaven those of you in front say after me lord jesus i believe in you come and join us sister lord jesus i believe in you i believe you died for me you shed your blood for my sins today i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that i'm born again the past is gone this is a new beginning in the name of jesus i denounce sin and satan holy spirit come and live in me today you are my god forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ we believe lord we believe oh lord we believe i believe i believe lord i believe Yes, Lord, we believe. He that cometh unto him must believe that he is, Hebrews 11 verse 6, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Every time you come before his presence, you must realize that there is a reward for seeking him. You are not wasting your time. For he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. He's called the Prince of Peace. When he comes, he truly gives you peace. Peace is not just quietness and rest. He gives you peace. He said, peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. His presence brings peace. His presence brings Every time you behold his glory, you see how small those mountains are. This is a sign that you are in his presence. Lord, we thank you. I have a very serious message tonight for the body of Christ. Very, very serious. It's a very prophetic message. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to be ambassadors not only ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven but help your brothers and sisters and families there are many messages that have come out from here that offer guidance direction prophetic accuracy and insight to help a lot of people we made our messages free ministries sell tapes and messages and make hundreds of millions from it but the time for that will come we are more interested in getting the agenda of the spirit to the nations as many who will be interested in hearing. let me tell you something without missing words we have a message we're not just crouching for what to say for the Bible says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. The Spirit is speaking. Helping us to have an understanding of times and seasons. To comprehend the things of the Spirit. And we thank God because he is granting us grace to build according to pattern. We are that uncompromising remnant. Who will not 
defile ourselves with the meat of Babylon that has corrupted many great men. We have chosen the path of the Spirit. And in spite of the pain it will bring, we will endure. We are this army determined to stand until we become all that he has destined us to be. And let me tell you something. It may take a while, but as surely as the morning comes after a night, a day will come. It will take long. But I have an assurance that a time will come when the word of God will be scarce. And whoever has that word will run with it. The price you are paying now is nothing compared to the price men will pay for their ignorance. This is why God is exposing us to his truth. Never take for granted the things that God is doing. This is not a church. You have your church where you worship on Sunday. This is an agenda. This is a program. This is a prophetic agenda. This is what God is doing. Hallelujah. So I like to prepare your heart. Never take for granted. Don't just come casually. For every time he calls you to a banquet, a table has been prepared before you. Hallelujah. And if you will believe him enough to realize you are not wasting your time, then the time of laughter will come. The Bible says it is as soon as Zion travails. The time of traveling is painful. Every great man knows that the birth of anything valuable is painful. Some of you had to trek to come here. Some of you probably have not eaten anything. There are families, this family, this whole family, father, mother, and all the children left Kogi State this morning to come. What are they looking for? For as soon as Zion travails, she will put forth his hand. I see Barista from Abuja. What you think people just come, you see, this is where what men of God don't get. We celebrate these things and just think this is a sign of increase in ministry. This is nonsense. It's my desire that this place becomes a portal where the voice of the Spirit will not be scarce, that we will not become part of the noise making preachers talking junks who are out of alignment with the things of the spirit that God will put his word he said he gave me the scroll and I did eat it and he said go and prophesy hallelujah that every time you come here you will hear the counsel of the spirit not the opinion of a man not the program, a doctrinal program of a sect or a religion, but that you will find God. This is why we depend so much in the Holy Spirit. It's not diabolism. We have come to realize that he's the only one who can help us fulfill this agenda. We are perpetually inadequate without him. That's why you hear us talk so much about the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people have a serious problem with that. But Jesus sent us the spirit to make us like him. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the spirit of the living God. He's the Holy Ghost. The scepter of the King of Kings. Yeah. He's the Holy Ghost, the seal of the age to come. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Jesus told us, he said, and when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will bring to your remembrance all the things that I've taught you. And he will show you. He will take up the things that are of the Father and show you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you. 
not common things but great and mighty things that you know not an apocalypse an unveiling of that which has been hidden the bible tells us that there are certain mysteries that have been hidden from the church appointed for a kind and a type of people and paul begins to text to tell the corinthian church he said i has not seen that means no dimension of prophetic eye before now will be able to access those archives they are under lock and key have been sealed until the time appointed the bible says the prophets kept stretching through their prophetic eyes to look into those times but it was not given unto them he said neither has any ear heard what god has prepared for them that love him but the bible says these mysteries will be granted unto a generation not necessarily just because of our prayer lives it is part of the prophetic mandate of the spirit for a type and a kind of generation hallelujah that generation that prophetic and apostolic generation that will step in in beauty and light there is a kind of revelation and access into deep spiritual things in other words the knowledge and the access we've had hitherto is good but it cannot sustain us in these new seasons that we're stepping into and so there is a need to cry unto God to say Lord let there be an opening of the seal so that those things that have been hidden aforetime that the scrolls will be open and the seals will be broken so that these things that have been hidden that even the great prophets could not access would it be open unto a generation but it will always take men who will defy the status quo and begin to press and say lord show us open our eyes open our eyes that we may see we're tired of recycling messages that have stopped people from moving higher. Oh Lord, that you will break that seal. And the Lord says, if you call on to me out of that revelation. For when the people of God were in captivity in Babylon, Daniel understood by books that after 70 years, it was the time of their liberation and exodus out of Babylon. And the Bible says, on the strength of that insight, he began to intercede suddenly Gabriel the archangel in service was going to bring the prophetic blueprint he said I Gabriel am come to give thee understanding because every time God sends a revelation it is signified by an angel revelations one by one verse one the Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ which he gave unto his servant John that he should show unto his servants and he gave it and signified it by his angel every time there are angels that convey revelations and guide the safe arrival of those revelations that's why to every church there were angels assigned their job is to make sure that the blueprint of the spirits that have been revealed will arrive safely the bible says while gabriel was on his way the prince of the power of the air the spiritual wickedness that governed the territory of persia attempted to stop him and as he continued traveling he wouldn't give up the bible says michael the archangel came and that message was brought there must be a generation ruth heflin left this prophecy before she went to be with the Lord she said there is a generation that will reveal the glory of God it will no longer be church as usual God is doing a new thing I'm announcing to you I've shared it here again and again and I've been criticized for it the old wine has finished there is a blowing of a new trumpet it's not the old it says after two days he will revive us but on the third day, he will raise us up. There are many people who have gone out of sync with spiritual things. The sounds of the spirit are now strange and foreign to them because of all of the benefits that may come with ministry. But let me tell you, there are a people who are determined to stay. 
He said, the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secrets. There are secrets. He will grant you access to do business in deep waters. And you will uncover things. This is what God is training you to become. Happy are you when God finds you faithful. Happy are you when God finds you uncompromising. It takes death to bring certain dimensions of glory into the earth realm. But happy are you. Hallelujah. I want to share with you very powerfully this night. I want to show you by the Spirit of God where the church is in the prophetic blueprint of the ages. It's important for us to know that we are playing prophecy. We are prophecy in motion. Hallelujah. The entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is an unfailing an unveiling of prophetic things hallelujah every story in the bible everything that has been written has its natural meaning but has its prophetic meaning everything an adumbration of the things that god wants to do the wedding in cana for instance was a type of the old wine and the new wine that is coming to the body of christ Hallelujah. It's very important. Thank you, Jesus. The first thing I want to share with you is the current agenda of the kingdom of darkness. I have been very concerned. Please take tonight's teaching very seriously. I have been very concerned at the deafness of even those who call themselves prophets. I'm going to say some things tonight that will disturb a number of you. To the agenda of the darkness. The Bible says that we be not ignorant of the devices. The word devices there means the structure and the methodology. Do not be ignorant. In other words, your ignorance will not become good for you. Do not be ignorant. There is a plot. There is an agenda of darkness. Listen. Every generation and every dispensation has had Satan coming in to corrupt the things that God would want to do. In the Garden of Eden, the Bible says that Satan came in all subtlety, having been thrown down. There was judgment in heaven, the Bible tells us. And Lucifer... That cherub that covereth, who wanted to arise, he said, I will arise and be as the stars of God. I want to be God by myself. And the Bible says there was war in heaven. And he fell with a third of the angels. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. It was his fall and the preceding judgment that led to Genesis 1 verse 2. And the earth was dark and void, formless. Let me announce to you, that hell is not some mystery. I've said it again and again. Hell is right in the earth. Hallelujah. And hell is not just a location, but hell is a spirit. The Bible says death, hell, and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is not demonic. The lake of fire is part of the kingdom of God. It was designed for the judgment of Satan and all who are in fraternity and partnership with him. So there is an agenda. In the days of Noah, the Bible makes us to understand that the fallen angels, because they have the ability to translate themselves, they started translating themselves and intermingling with the daughters of men. In an attempt to corrupt the race. That was the agenda of Satan during that dispensation. Hallelujah. When God raised a prophet. Elijah the Tishbite. The Bible tells us that there was a very strange woman. A prophetic type of the mystery Babylon called Jezebel. Every time God has a, an agenda. Satan always has a strategy and a plot. 
and not knowing it can cause believers severe casualty. When Jesus began to admonish the seven churches that were spread across Asia Minor, a type of the prophetic churches, a, a type of the church age, for every church that he commended, he began to reveal to them the plots of Satan. For certain churches, he began to tell them that there were certain churches that were the churches of Satan, where Satan sat. Others, he warned them that the strategy of the devil is to make men look warm and to say, I have acquired this wealth. In every generation and every prophetic agenda of God, there is a strategy. The Bible says, do not be ignorant. And I want to share with you right now. The strategy that the devil would want to use to cause the sons in light to abort the prophetic agenda that God has for us. You ready? Number one, deception. 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 Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Look at me. Deception is the art of bringing men into error. Are you listening to me? To bring men into error, to cause a disaligning. To bring men into error. There is a lot, one of the things, one of the biggest problems of the church, and even the church in Nigeria right now, is the spirit of deception. It's a terrible agenda by the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. And the Bible begins to warn us that this deception can be so great, even the elect can be deceived if care is not taken. There are lots of things going on in our churches and going on in various places. And because many men of God are not standing close to the ark, there's so much deception. Popular things that look nice but are, are orchestrated by the devil. Many doctrines that we uphold today, they are the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. Metaphysical doctrines. They look nice. They look great. They inspire us. But they are not of God. How did it become like this? One mentor teaching another. Somebody going for conference and getting it. Somebody sharing his testimony. Deception. Acts chapter 4. God knew that these kinds of things will arise. And it was on account of this that he gave unto men gifts. It's a shame upon the fivefold ministry. That we do not even realize why God anointed and carved out the structure of the fivefold ministry. It's not for jamboree. Not for competition. Not to show which office is greater than which. Are you there? Verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Those gifts are not talents. Those gifts are people. Now he that has ascended, what is it but he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended, you see that he descended to the lower parts of the earth. Jesus went to hell and the Bible calls it the lower part of the earth. Not the lower part outside the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 11. He gave unto some apostles. Listen please. MOG, listen carefully. He gave unto some apostles. To some prophets. To some evangelists, to some pastors and teachers. Why? For launching, answer me, for building ministries and empires, for celebrating vain accomplishments 
that have no corresponding effect in the spirit. The Bible says, for the perfecting, equipping, maturing, building up, structuring of the saints. That's why he gave the gifts. That they, the saints, will now do the work of the ministry. To the end that we all come into the unity of faith. And of the knowledge, epignosis, accurate knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the fullness of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And even that growth is to an end. Verse 14, read together. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Now listen. It said by the slight of men. And the crowning craftiness. Whereby they lie in wait to. Deception. Deception. There is a lot of deception. Going on in the body of Christ. And a lot of people. Don't want to speak. Why? Because they don't want to, they hate the injury. Let me tell you something. If you do not want to stand the pain of ministry, go and get a job. Just go somewhere. We have a lot of men of God who are afraid of their ego, their reputation, and they will not alert the body when there is danger. The Bible says, not many of you should presume to be teachers because you will be judged. Hallelujah. There is a lot of deception in the body of Christ. A lot of gospels. Colossians 2 verse 8. Can we look at that quickly? Thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is strong in this place. Colossians 2 verse 8. The agenda of the devil. Are you there? One to read. It's projected. Beware lest any man spoil you. Stop. The word spoil there is let any man make you a spoil. You know when? when let any man plunder you. Cheat you. Let any man spoil you. Through what? What is, hold on. What is philosophy? What is philosophy? Nice, well-crafted entertaining intelligent intellectual presentation of scripture the bible calls it philosophy and what vain deceit is that in your bible it says after what the tradition of men and after fraternity with this world based on the principles and concepts that have evolved from men who brought it about without the presence of God. After the redument, this is what is happening in many churches. After the redument of this world, but not after Christ. We have emulated a lot of junks and things that have no spiritual bearing. We have read all kinds of unbelievers have written entrepreneurial books on how to run a church like a business empire. And we have people who are gullible. They went for retreats but not to pray. They went to sit down and listen to doctrines of devils. And they have learned all kinds of demonic ways of manipulation and seductions. And they are deceiving the body of Christ after the redument of the world. Are you, are you hearing me tonight? With my mouth... Shall I make it known from the rising of the sun right until it's going down? I will preach of the mercies of the Lord. Some of us are already being deceived right now. There are all kinds of metaphysical deceit. Please hear me. 
Some of us in our innocence, we have mentored men that are misleading us in the name of deceit. Praise the Lord. There are many churches right now that do all kinds of satanic and demonic things. The man of God has special members they take to the river. They do all kinds of demonic satanic things. Because they read the Bible does not mean it's of God. There are men of God that add the word of God with all kinds of satanic books. 12 books of Moses. 11 books of Moses. All kinds of metaphysical, philosophical, sociological junks. We put it together. The fact that you are compromising and seeing results does not mean it's God. There are natural principles. And men by nature are gullible. That a crowd is coming like this does not necessarily verify that we are of God. Hallelujah. Many of us like results. Anything that looks like results, we just go hook, line, and sink. But may the Lord grant us eyes to see. May we see the handwritings on the wall and see that for many people it is written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesen. God is saying, we have been weighing you for a long time. You have been misleading people. God has been weighing you. But Ichabod, the glory will depart from many churches. And Ezekiel was caught up in the spirit. And when Ezekiel went by the spirit to the temple, he saw the atrocities that were happening in the temple. Yet the men of God were still dressing nice, wearing suits, wearing kaftan like me, having flowers around, but they are not of God. Deceiving people and being deceived themselves. God grant us ears to hear and eyes to see. There are an evolution of erroneous doctrines. Please listen to me. Some of these doctrines have been so long in the body of Christ. They are popular. We like them. You hear them on TV. People can attest to have received results from them. But I tell you the truth, they are not of God. When Moses threw his rod, Pharaoh also threw his rod. And they all became serpents. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come out of her. Come out. It was a cry to the Zion of God. Come out of her. Be not partakers of her hollow tree. So that you will not participate in her, in her plague. And the deception is twofold. Number one, erroneous doctrines. Popular but erroneous doctrines. Well received but erroneous doctrines. Result producing but erroneous doctrines. Number two, listen, look up please. The second, so the first dimension of the deception is a reception of doctrines that may be popular. Listen. Don't get me wrong. Some of the people who advocate these doctrines are innocent people. Genuinely called of God. Hallelujah. The second is deception to come, listen. I think this second one is even more, is worse than the first dimension of deception. Where people refuse to open up themselves to the greater light and the truth of God's word because of their ego and what it will cost them. Are you listening to me? There are men who would rather die than to begin to explore the new things they are hearing to find out whether they are wrong. There are churches and denominations that will never change. 
it doesn't matter even if, it's, if Jesus appears to them. They have built a reputation around their doctrines too much. It, it, they will have to die. Many people will not adjust. Rather, they will criticize any truth that is beyond their comprehension. I, I said it during the teachings, the full, the full gospel. There are people who have mistakenly been convinced that they are the alpha and omega of all the keys of revelation of the kingdom and that the sphere of all that they know is all that there is in God. This is another kind of deception. The best any man can be is an effective member of the body. So we have men who are arrogant. I once had a man of God make a very arrogant statement that even if for any reason he has cause to read another man's book, even if he reads it, he will see a lot of things through that book that even the author did not see. I said, look at it. See that? That's what stopped the scribes from receiving the message of Jesus. Because they had known all the books, the Pentateuch. They were the doctors and philosophers of that time. They had every knowledge that they needed. So when Jesus came with a simple message, thy kingdom come, by your will being done, they rejected it because it did not appeal to them. And when they found out that the whole town was running in sincere hunger, just like many people do today, they began to criticize and made it a point of duty that Jesus would die. But his death only escalated the message. And today, millions and billions of people are receiving this truth. It takes a childlike heart. One of the biggest deceptions in the church right now is the ego to accept the fact that, look, could it be that this that I've held on to, could it be wrong? Or could it be that it may not be wrong, but there is a higher light? Are you listening to me? There are truths that are not wrong. The Bible says he made many lights. Those lights gave illumination in their capacity. But then God made two great lights. Let me give you an advice. You must posture yourself consistently. Listen to me. You must posture yourself. Open up yourself and be in a position of perpetual realignment. Because revelation is progressive. That is a sign that you are making progress in the spirit. As you begin to explore the deep things of God, you will begin to see clearer. The Bible says Jesus touched his eyes and he saw men but he saw them like trees. If Jesus had left him, he would argue that men are like trees. But then he touched his eyes again. And the Bible says he began to see clearly. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. There has been an inaccurate interpretation of the truth of God's word. Inaccurate. And let me tell you something. When it comes to the accurate interpretation of God's word. It's not about Bible college and theological study. It's about the spirit of prophecy. Because the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit prophecy. Deception. Some of our family members today have been taught that when they leave a particular man of God, their destiny goes with him. Have you, have you had that kind of gospel? Where the man of God ties himself and says, you are tied to the oil on my life. If you leave, you will fail. It's called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. It came from the pit of hell. Popular, result producing, but erroneous. This does not come from God. The reason why many men of God like it is because it's lucrative. It has a lot of financial benefits. 
if I can have 10 wealthy people tied to my oil. Men have just found ways to camp and to ease away their insecurities and frustrations. So they create gospels that try to make them feel secured by threatening people around. It came from the devil. Some of you are already doing it. Stop it tonight. You are being in deception. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God never gave man authority to usurp authority over another person. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship is not idolatry. It's to guide and instruct in righteousness. Oh, but there is a change. There is a change. I tell you, there is a change. Things will not be as they have always been. There is the hand of God bringing judgment and bringing redemption. Because there are many people that are in this era innocently. Both men of God and people. We used to believe some of these things years ago. But as we began to explore, every time we believed it, something in our hearts told us, uh uh, go back. And like the Bereans, we went back. And when we began to explore, we found out that there were a lot of question marks. They did a lot of filling the gap. And we said, no way. What is supposed to be in that gap? This is what the Lord has been. There are many of you, when you hear a message, it's not like you are cynical. Something in your spirit tells you, go back. Go back. When other people are shouting, whoa, God says, uh-uh. Fill in that gap before you rejoice. Fill in the gap. It's deception. It's deception. Is happening fast fast there are deceptive church growth principles that are taught in ministers conferences deceptive diabolical occultic church growth principles there are deceptive church fundraising principles popular seemingly result producing but hear this voice tonight I'm speaking to you. John said, I am the voice of one. They said, who are you? Where do you belong? Which camp do you belong? John said, uh -uh, this is not an issue of camp. I am just a voice. One of the first assignments of the spirit of prophecy is to destroy the altars of Baal that a new one be built. Deception. The strength of the kingdom of darkness is ignorance. For as long as the body of Christ remains in ignorance, ignorance, the inaccurate understanding of scriptures. Revelation is not an opinion of man, it's an unfailing of that which has been hidden and that happens by the spirit of God deception hallelujah number two agenda of the devil for the church in this season is going to shock you what I'm about to say distractions through religious activities are you hearing what I'm saying destructive religious activities hmm. you have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise you have taken all dominion you have taken all the praise you have made them yours the highest praise to the king he will take all the glory. He will take all the praise. He will take all dominion. He will take all the praise. He will make it yours. Paul seeing and speaking to the Hebrew church. He said with all things have been made under the feet of Jesus. He said but we do not yet see. Although 
from heaven's perspective it has been so there is still a contention in the earth realm that's why god will use voices to make that a reality that christ will submit to the authority of the father the church will submit to the authority of christ and by the agents of the spirit the spirit and the bride will compel cosmos to come under the authority of the church this is the agenda of god for the nations so there is a plot listen to me listen to me this is a a shoot out from the spirit of deception distractions there is no time in the church age where believers have activities everybody say after me activities there are there are there are churches that are organizing programs every day every day every day that's what they read from their books engage the members and they won't leave your church so they read it it was written by a business expert and a consultant it looks popular but let me tell you the truth you can criticize me i'm used to it but i will tell you these things look popular let me tell you where this spirit came from hold on do you realize that when the nation of israel were in captivity in egypt hallelujah when moses came as a deliverer what happened the moment he went to pharaoh and said god is already making preparation to get the people out pharaoh said ah let's use a strategy he said give them more work it is because they are idle that they even have the gods to begin to consider an exodus occupy them and when they had the work it was too much they told moses they said forget about this issue of exodus now because now they are making us look for straw every time satan sees a people waiting do you know how many times the bible talks about the benefit of waiting i bring you the counsel of the spirit there is too much distraction activities everywhere hallelujah now i'm not saying everybody who is involved in this is false you get my point i'm just trying to plot out to you we think the impact is in the motions but the bible says it is they that wait upon the lord they shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings there are many men of god right now who are under pressure pressure to do any and everything just finding activities because they believe that once there is motion who taught us facebook twitter the more you create activities the more people come to your side it is that business strategy we brought to the church because we think the church is facebook so we think when we keep engaging the people it will show that we are increasing the average believer has no knowledge of the truth of god's word that he can use to stand alone that's why we depend on pastors people i'm not saying spiritual authorities and ministers no we are not we have a place in the body of christ but where you become so dependent as though if you leave the person you will die you are already on the road to deception and men of god pride themselves how many sons and daughters you know when people come to me and talk about submission i feel like running away because i cannot understand what they are saying aaron my son ah me when you visit the secret place, you'll be ashamed of taking some titles. It will take God to force you and say, just for organization. Yet, yeah, this is the pride of people. They fight it. Some men have the effrontery to say, this is my earthly father, but he's my spiritual son. Shame on both the man and his revelation. It's a sign of immaturity. We think it is great pride because they clap for you after the statement. Talk is cheap.
distraction. Religious activities where Christ is not the focus. Can I tell you the truth? Look at me. I'm going to tell you a truth you may not hear in many places. Over 70% of the weekly religious activities that are happening in many of the Christian circles are only aimed at increasing the ministry and getting the job going. Christ is less, if at all, a focus in most of these programs. Forget about what we men of God do on stage. We can kneel down and cry and ushers will bring this and will clean book. Imagine holding I'm just trying to show you all the benefits. If you gather 100,000 people non-stop for 100 days do you know how much you will raise? Is it lucrative or not? Not to talk of those who will sow into your life by being blessed. Now, I'm not saying every gathering is wrong. But I'm telling you, many of these gatherings are just a... a they don't teach you. I'm telling you this. They don't share it in congregations. Go, you don't have the opportunity to go for a minister's conference. They will look at you and say, are you a minister? Go out. I am telling you. And people discuss it boldly. But let there be a generation that will not adulterate itself with corruption and error. Many of you will be the only voices some communities will have to hear. The Bible says there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect. Will you allow your voice to be corrupted? There is a way of getting all of these things. Look at me. While I was preparing to come, I was taking my bath and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. And I was angry in my spirit about the ways people raise money in church. And then the Lord told me something. He said, listen, listen. I don't know of any church in the world. I don't know of any auditorium in the world that can sit two million people comfortably. I don't know of any. The largest gathering in the world that has happened is six million people within a span of three days. Only three days. They could not manage them. But Moses worked with more than three million people for a long time. How did he cater for their need? What system was used? There is no auditorium I know on earth, church auditorium, that is as expensive as the temple of Solomon. How did they do it? Were the people so wealthy like that or was there a spiritual principle we are missing out? They had enough. I don't know one church that has stopped members and said this is enough except it's just emotional frivolities by the pastor. You say, oh, it's enough. Don't bring more money. But David meant it. He, was, he had enough to start building the temple. What are we missing, church of the Lord Jesus Christ? distraction there are many of you it is when you started getting unnecessarily distracted that your spiritual life started dying are you following me now you started with god you started celebrating ministrations every day this is how busy my itinerary is in the morning i'm here i don't have time for you i have one in the evening then tomorrow and you started calling it ministry expansion because at the end of it there is an envelope you calculate everything that's somebody's salary your money in a week is somebody's salary and he said lord thank you you spoke to me that the oil of my life will speak be careful because you will not know when you will fall the bible says let he that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall this is what has killed men of God. Many men of God started on fire, but they became administration, administrators. I try as much as possible, and we try in this ministry to do less of administration. God gave us wisdom to create robust administrative structures so that we can focus on the ministry of the word and prayer. Because let me tell you, some of you are already receiving all kinds of invitations. You think that a door is opening means it's God that opened it. Be careful. I pray on every ministration before I honor it. I don't care who is bringing it. 
You ask the protocol department and they will tell you. Because I do not want to be found doing what God has not sent me to do. When he sends you, he will defend you. When you send yourself, you will defend yourself. Hallelujah. These are unpopular parts. But choose whether to be a celebrity in the eyes of men or to be a voice that men can listen whenever they want to hear the counsel of God. I choose the latter. That I will be a voice. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Look at me. Many of you may need to make resolutions this night. Look at me, please. Listen. I want you, as you go back this night, go and edit the things you do with your 24 hours and see how much Satan has choked you with activities that have no eternal relevance. I am telling you the truth. Is that true? Just take out time and in all sincerity through the lens of truth and of the word of God, edit your 24 hours and see how many things you do within your 24 hours that actually leads you towards purpose and has an eternal relevance. You will understand that this is a, this is a strategy from Satan to distract us. I've taken our time to edit my life. Especially in this phase of our lives. Look at me. There are some things that are not necessarily evil, but they are weights at this level of life. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, Hebrews 12 verse 1, it says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. They are not necessarily sins, but they are weights. Lamentations 3.27 He said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Some of you may never be great in life because you are not ready to take the burden now. The strength, the glory of young people is in their strength. Pay the price. Now you have the energy to fast. Some of our parents cannot endure that again. But now you have strength. So take advantage of the strength you have right now. Your mind is still alive and active. Explore. Pay the price. I won't deceive you. You will cry. It will cost you something. But when weeping is done, you will rejoice forever. Let's hurry up. The third plot, Satan, is fraternity with Babylon. Friendship. Friendship with Babylon. The Bible says, love not the world. The word love there is do not develop a lust, a craving. Love not the world or the things that are in this world. The word world there is the word system. Are you listening to me? Some people have religiously said, uh -huh. why are you driving a nice car? Why are you doing this? Why are we buying this? We are wasting money. Please, this is not what the Bible is talking about. This is another religion. It is in category one. You know, the deception thing. No. God is not against your looking good. Lazarus with all his poverty is in heaven. Abraham with his wealth is in heaven. It's not because they were rich or poor that they missed heaven or didn't get there. You can have a productive life on earth and have eternal relevance. I choose that option. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? But it says, love not the world or the things that are in this world. It says, whoever loves the world, period, without argument, the love of the Father is not in him. Loss of the eyes, loss of the flesh, pride of life. Some of us have a craving for vanities when god wants you to sit down and study you say ah there's one car exhibition they are doing somewhere it's not wrong but compared to the priority you have this is vanity are you hearing what i'm saying there are people who can be in church like this and the word of god is coming with this kind of fire that the word of god is coming check what they are doing 
they are trying to respond to their friend as if the friend is dying it can't wait were you dead before facebook or or all of the the social media see some of you cannot even off your phone to pray it will be as if pin is choking you five minutes just what you just run and say let me check if nobody has checked you will send something you are waiting for who will respond this is this is fraternity with babylon That's where some of you learned ungodly attitudes. They wrote poems and jokes that are satanic and anti-progress, anti-greatness. You saw it, read it, absorbed it, and you are using it. See how your life started nose diving. Many people got into satanic relationships. Men of God online. Now, I know that these things have been used very well. There, is, there are demonic sites that men of God have gone to. Demonic sites. All searching for solutions. Huh? Zodiac. Huh? Zodiac sites. You know them. You are pretending as if you don't know them. All of these sites. Click and see who your life partner is. Or click and see how long you have to live. They say you are dying next week. He say, I'm coming for Koinonia. Who asked you to go and click it? You put your date of birth, everything, the name of your intending spouse, he brought out your life. He you said you have suffering and death afterwards. You just say, I want to see you. Some things have been going on in my life. What is it? You carried your hands and you went and tied yourself. fraternity longer throat has taken some people they've gone to places where they shouldn't go said yes to things and people they should not say yes to he who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls i refuse i refuse to fraternize with babylon not her methods, not her way of life. Because the Bible says, Babylon the great is falling. He said, her and all the kings of the earth that have benefited in her merchandise. He said, this great harlot, Babylon, in one hour, her glory has been turned to shame. It will be sudden. And the Bible tells us, come out of her. Come out of her. God is speaking to somebody tonight. Come out of her. Go and re-edit your life. Re-edit your life. There are some of you ladies here. You can have 10 to 20 boyfriends. From the film you watch, they said that's how to be a correct girl. Rich, poor, average, in case anyone that works. You hear a message like this now and think we're just sweating and talking nonsense and you'll be hardened. And if they ask, they say, what kind of man do you want to marry? You say, I want him to be serious with God. He must be a disciplined man. Is it a fair combination? Look at the way your life is. Everybody say after me, I will stand out. I hope as you are laughing, the Lord is speaking to you. Hallelujah. Deception, destruction, fraternity with Babylon. Let me tell you the agenda of God now. We cannot just talk about the things that the devil is doing. What is God doing? The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. The spirit and the bride say come let me tell you what is happening in the body of Christ right now look at me the Bible says before the day of the Lord please listen 
it tells us that something is going to happen. What will happen? He said, Elijah shall come again before the day of the Lord. Why will Elijah come? What does Elijah represent? The transfiguration of Jesus Christ. When Jesus was transfigured, two people stood by his left and right. Is that correct? One was Elijah. The other was Moses representing the law and the prophet. Notice that all the people that represent major spiritual truths that should not be aborted, though they died, but their body did not touch this earth. Because their, their representation is an adumbration. Are you listening to me? If Moses' body dies and is buried in the earth, and this is, I'm going to say something that will create a lot of controversy right now. Moses represents the law. This is a very shocking thing. It's against what has been preached. But did you notice that against our popular messages, Moses, his body is not in the earth. Elijah represents the prophet. The prophetic has not finished. So Elijah did not touch the earth. I won't say more than that. Sila, let he that has an ear hear what the Spirit say to the churches. Popular, but wrong. Hmm. Let's continue. The Bible says Elijah will come, Malachi. It says, before the great day of the Lord. Listen. Every time Jesus is about to appear, whether Jesus as a person or his prophetic agenda, Elijah always foreruns him. Are you following me now? Before Elijah came in the New Testament, before Jesus came, what happened? John the Baptist came where? In the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of prophecy. And the Bible says before Jesus will come again, there will be a manifestation of Elijah. So, don't be surprised if you see a manifestation of prophets. But let me tell you where the problem is wrong. Elijah is not manifesting as a miracle worker. Elijah is manifesting to bring accurate knowledge of the understanding of the truth. To prepare the church for the coming of Christ. Are you getting that? If you understand this, you can test prophecy at once. Because see... The clearest proof that a man is a prophet is not miracles and all of this. The clearest proof is that you can bring to us an accurate understanding of scripture. This is what tells us that you are in connection with the throne room. It said by their fruits. Their fruit is not character. Character can be deceptive. Their fruit is their message. Right now, many people believe if your pastor is a prophet, I apologize. I'm not, I'm not against. I have people that are prophets. I know they are of God. We, we, we have times dedicated. We live in the miraculous here. But I'm telling you, listen to me. The primary function of prophets in this day is not to check how much you have in your account and say, promise, stand up. 331 302 Eight seven nine one one ten. That's my account number. <laughs> you see that, and you say Jesus. Now that's the manifestation of the gift. But if that is all we think prophecy is about, that's not the true portrait of the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah first comes. The first assignment is to correct errors by the accurate understanding this is what we call epignosis epignosis is not just a greek terminology to write books and sell uh -uh. epignosis means the accurate understanding of truth and this one is by revelation there is no school that will teach it the spirit of god will overshadow a man and bet something mary said how shall these things be Seeing that I know not a man. He said the power of the highest will overshadow you. There are men who God is overshadowing right now. God is mantling, closing them like a coven. And birthing 
dangerous dimensions of spiritual truth. That's the spirit of Elijah. When I talk of the spirit of prophecy, I'm not necessarily talking of the office of a prophet alone. Correcting a lot of things. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Will he find men who will be able to align and adjust to the corrections of the truth? Are you receiving something? When, listen to me, listen to me. Before the rebuilding of Zion, there will first be a breaking down, a tearing down. Are you listening to me? Then there will be a reconstruction of the house of God, not by the patterns of men. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The sacrifice of Cain and Abel is a type of the old and the new church. It's a prophetic adumbration. What happened? Because Cain is the elder brother, he believed that he understood the rudiments of giving that kind of sacrifice. And the Bible says he wanted to sacrifice and do something for God, but his combinations were wrong. Where they received, and then his brother Abel, which is a type of the new church, came and put that sacrifice according to pattern. So God is revealing divine patterns on how to do spiritual things such that they become acceptable sacrifices. And this will cause the way we run ministry as we know to change for many ministries. Happy are ministries that can align and take the pain and, and forget about the ego and allow it to happen. But for those who will not change, mene, mene, tekel, ufesen. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Hallelujah. So the first thing that God is doing right now is correcting errors. Let me tell you, don't confuse this. This is what is happening in the body of Christ. God is raising prophetic and apostolic voices who are coming after the order of Elijah. With the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Their focus and everything they do, by votes and leads people directly to the Christ of God. And they will come with grace. They will deliver mysteries that are uncommon. The fact that these mysteries are uncommon does not mean it is not of God. It will be resisted, but that which is born of God always overcomes. So eventually... Light will surpass darkness. It will be strange. When Jesus came, bringing the gospel of the kingdom, the Bible says, the people say, from whence cometh this man? He speaks as one with authority and not as the scribes. The Bible says, when they saw the miracles and the things he did, they said, we have never seen it in this fashion. That means there is a fashion that is coming. And that's why God is preparing you. That you are hearing this message tonight, I want you to know that you are part of the agenda of God. Are you listening to me? That you are hearing this message, whether inside or outside, that you are hearing this message. And for as many around this country and the world who will hear this message and those who are streaming online, I'm telling you that there is an agenda. And for you to be hearing this message, you are part of it. Just as God is using me, there are many prophetic voices scattered around the world. Not many, as it were. But many in that they are within reach. That God is raising. The message is the same. The expressions must be different. Because we are different. But the passion and the communications of the spirit is the same. Preparing the bride. It is the spirit and the bride that will ask this word to come. Can you just pray in tongues as you're seated in one minute? Thank 
Yes, Lord, we hear your voice. We hearken unto the voice of the Spirit. And we understand the handwritings that you are writing on the wall. You must open your heart. Some of the things I've shared have challenged some of you. Search the scriptures and you will find that the word of God is consistent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, just just express your spirit in, in one or two minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zibata balada bakasiha. The remnant of the house of Jacob. The uncompromising generation kept under the custody of Obadiah 7,000 who have refused to bow to Baal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, ventilate your spirit. Just let it find expression. One minute I will continue. Outside, make sure you are stretching. We hear the sounds of the spirit. to the hill of the Lord we press higher in the spirit it may cost us now but we will pay the price we will soar to the spirit we will labor in knowledge uncompromising yeah 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 so let it rain of heaven let it rain yeah. let it rain would you open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven 
Elijah will be poured upon the body of Christ and now is that time in the prophetic blueprint of the spirit where those who are interested Elijah worshippers Elijah preachers Elijah businessmen Elijah workers Elijah politicians men crafted Forged out of the furnace of affliction with scars that represent their dealings in the spirit. Men who have endured pain, men who have endured tears, men who have died to themselves and their agendas. Elijah's in the military, Elijah's in business the spirit of prophecy that will testify only of Christ and of his agenda listen when the spirit of Elijah comes the spirit of Elijah will tear down walls the spirit of elijah will first be destructive and then constructive it will break down patterns that have been built after babel for there is a rebuilding of the tower of babel but the spirit of elijah is an audacious spirit is a prophetic and apostolic spirit of prophecy that comes to correct the errors of the fathers to correct the errors and they shall be called the repairers of the bridge they shall rebuild the walls and raise the desolations of all generations they shall be called the repairers of the bridge the repairers of the bridge they will fix that which was spoiled they will fix that which has been popular yet not in synchrony not in tandem with the workings of the spirit they will have ears that are sharp they will have eyes with the visions of an eagle and they will be able to decipher the writings on the world they will hearken to the voice of his majesty and will only build the house according to divine pattern they will introduce a fire that will burn everything and test everything it will be a refiner's fire they will come after the order of elijah that the word of god from their mouth will be like fire it will burn it will reshape it will construct partake about attire there will be men of power men of force men of grace men of dexterity audacity they will have power in the heavens It is during that time that the sun will be turned into blood and there will be signs in the earth. There will be wonders because the manifestation 
of this man I bring to you body of Christ blow the trumpet I come with an apostolic mantle sound the alarm sound the alarm the seasons are changing there is a renaissance a rebirth of the Elijah church correcting the errors of the fathers men of authentic power men of grace men of revelation and insight that have not been taught by any man comparing spiritual things with spiritual that is only taught by the agency of the Holy Ghost those who have searched and understood where the secret place of the Most High is they have found it they've come there and they will abide under the shadow of the Almighty take us to that place let there be a burden of the Elijah church let there be a burden of the Elijah church in Abuja in Lagos in Zaria in Port Harcourt, all over Nigeria let there be a burden we blow the shofar we authorize heaven Elijah's arise Elijah's arise Elijah businessmen arise Elijah preachers arise Elijah worshippers arise with the spirit of prophecy which will only testify of no denomination of no sect but the Christ of God Kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. Doctrines will rise against doctrines. Nations will rise against nations. There will be a clash of light and darkness. And the church of the Lord, built upon the rock, shall stand. Tried by fire. Men who have been battered from the furnace of pain and affliction. With no agenda of their own whatsoever. This is a message from the Lord to the body of Christ. The spirit of Elijah comments. The spirit of prophecy. There will be a restoration of the accurate interpretation of the truth of the word. Accurate. Accurate. Given by the Holy Ghost, the one who inspired it, accurate interpretation of scriptures. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. The Lord told me that what will begin to happen is an exposition of darkness. You will hear things on media that will shock you. Darkness will be exposed. The veils that have covered the eyes of men for years will be exposed. Mene, mene, tekel, ufasen. I sound it. And I prophesied as I was commanded. Mene, 
Mener, Pekel, Ufesen, the altars of Baal. Judgment is coming upon the body of Christ. And there will be a smashing down. For many have been weighed in a balance and they have been found wanting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After the destruction of the altars of Baal, the next will be a fresh walk upon the saints, preparing them for the last apostolic revival that will be coming upon the earth. That will be the next mission of the spirit of Elijah. First to tear down walls, to correct error, and then to begin to rebuild the saints. There will be a restoration of the true apostolic, the true prophetic, the true evangelistic, the true pastoral and teacher offices. Then once again, men will begin to call upon the name of the God that will not be strange unto them. Men will begin to call upon the God that they know and have a working relationship with. And I tell you friends, when that begins to happen, it will announce the greatest reviver Smith Wigglesworth prophesied it. The generals of old prophesied it. I announce to you, there is coming a revival. Everything that will be shaken will be shaken. The newspapers will no longer carry stories of politicians. The captions will be the fire of the spirit. Our media, we will not need to pay to go on air. The impact will be so great. It will make news. The fire will fall in nations you did not expect. And then after that, the heavens will be open. And once again, we will see him, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega. He will come gloriously upon the silvery cloud and his feet will not touch the earth and the victorious church now without spot or wrinkle will be caught up and we will meet with him and it will begin another dispensation and then the spirit and the bride we say come lord come lord yes to your agenda yes to your agenda Yes to your agenda. We make way for the coming of the Lord Jesus. We make way for the revival. Jesus is coming. Preachers don't preach it again. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming with the blast of the archangel. He will come for a victorious church. His coming is soon. That's why the spirit of Elijah is released upon the body. Jesus is coming this same Jesus whom you have seen go to heaven will return in the exact same manner I bring you a message Jesus Christ is returning to planet earth Jesus Christ is returning it will happen it's not a myth it's not a legend a day will come there will be no more business there will be no more APU an agenda bigger than it will unfold we are at the ending periods let him that has an ear share and give priority to the agenda of the spirit every other thing will become temporal but only one agenda will stand
Alléluia. Alléluia. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This is what God is doing right now. Right now. If you've ever tried to find out where the church is in prophecy, this is what God is doing right now. Any church, any man of God, you find with the spirit of Elijah tearing down the walls of Baal and building people is a true church. This is how you will know them that are of God and them that are not of God. And all the sorcerers and magicians and the soothsayers and the necromancers that appear, they will fall together with Babylon. I give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Please let me pray for the family that came from Kogi. Please come. Tonight's message is a message to the body of Christ. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, ma. You're welcome, my dear. Welcome. Can you appreciate them? <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to announce to you that you are come to Mount Zion. The Spirit of God is in this place. There's no jamboree or magic. Christ is Lord here. The Lord will bring deliverance to your family. The oppression of 36 years will end. Can I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me something about you, sir. It's a miracle that you are not yet dead based on the things that I'm seeing. Because death tried you two times. This is what God is telling me. Yes. Is that true? They will go to inside church. to collapse and The Lord is telling me to tell you that death tried him two times. It's the grace of God that has kept him. You see. And and you do nothing. Huh? I'm seeing a bag with holes inside. Everything you get leaves. Lord, I don't, I don't feel it. Again. It's all right. It's all right. Please, please, don't cry. Please help her with a handkerchief. Please, somebody. This is a mother, for God's sake. Please, please. You can see how wicked Satan is. And rather than we men of God contending to bring solutions for people, we are looking for names for ourselves. All of you will experience the hand of God. Let me tell you, things will change. You will know you met God tonight. We are his ambassadors. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Who is, are you sisters? That's what I'm saying. Don't, don't worry, don't tell me, let me talk. Hmm? Because I need to, there is, there is, the, this one is a curse. Huh? Sister, there is a curse. Any man that comes around you will just play around with your heart and pack his load and go. This is what has been happening. A very beautiful girl. Huh? But the Lord will set you free. Okay? And you, I'm going to pray for you. Because the face I'm seeing physically is not what I'm seeing in the spirit. Sir, God showed me, but I didn't talk to you. You are tied with snakes. This is what I'm seeing from your feet to your head. This is what makes him to collapse. It's as if you cannot move your legs. Yes, yes. Is that true? It, I'm seeing, but God will set you free. Yes. Madam, please don't cry. Please, for God's sake. It's okay. Hope comes to your family. This is not everybody. Bring their pictures. You brought some pictures. Go and bring it. Did 
did you discuss this with me? Did you discuss this with me? Did you tell me you are coming with pictures? The Lord who sees these things will solve your problems. Who is this? Where is he? It's not you. The devil put the spirit of hatred between you and him. Even the little resources to send and help you is not doing it. It's not a bad person. This is demonic. Before, where, where? If you no see me, where is that to our money? But in now, three months, you no send anything. No tell me anything. So let hope, let it rise. For darkness trembles in your holy land. Sing it one more time for this family. Listen, when I pray for you, things will change overnight. Did you hear what I said? Things will change overnight. Sir, this oppression will leave you right now. I set you free right now. Sheba Katalabos. The heat you're feeling is the power of God. Now, devil of death, leave him. I curse you right now. Take your hands off him. I restore to you everything you have lost. Hell. Hell. Sir. Command financial restoration, restoration of everything you have lost in the name of Jesus. It's written in God's word, blotting out every handwriting. I enforce that which has been finished from redemption, and I declare that you will walk in victory in the name of Jesus. I need to pray for you. That devil of darkness, leave this woman right now. You are leaving. I curse it. You are the spirit of delay. You are the spirit of dead sea. Something is coming out from you. Out. Out of this woman right now. I reconcile you with all your loved ones. May they begin to call you and bless you. Let your business flourish. I hold your hands and I give you the keys of blessings as an ambassador of the Most High. Let your times of tears end forever. You will live long. Any curse on you be set free right now a curse on you let the curse be taken let the curse go by the blood of Jesus see there is a demon leave her, leave her, see this is it out out, out come out of her right now, come out of her this is the spirit responsible for this predicament, out Come out of her right now. Don't, your mother is not a witch. Are you hearing me? Please, please don't let people. This is, this is just deliverance God is doing for her.
come out you are a foul spirit out of this woman right now out out this curse of darkness come out of her stand up madam you are free stand up god bless you don't cry please don't cry please where's that handkerchief help her look madam wait let me explain. don't be embarrassed please don't be embarrassed all right please don't let anybody go on you are not a witch please do you understand what happens is that demons can influence people these are curses and wickedness of the devil so this manifestation is just a spirit living you are free now what you need is to fuel yourself with the word of god My dear, let me pray for you. Because the Lord, you were the one that God used as a savior. Huh? Look at me. Just look at me. Let this girl go around. Let her go free right now. I curse you. Out. Come out. Out of her right now. I set you free. I set you free. I open up every door that has been closed. Return no more in Jesus' name. get married huh? do you believe that so let me pray for you thank you Jesus spirit of delay you are of the devil let this girl go set you free right now. I call forth your life partner into your life right now without confusion, without ambiguity. They will come and testify in the name of Jesus. Please hold your hands together. Holy Spirit, I command salvation for this family right now both those that are here and everyone represented in this picture by faith I command every door that has been closed let it be open right now in the name of Jesus I pray that you will have passion for the word of God because that's the ultimate security and I pray the name of the Lord that is a strong tower let that name shield you as the mountains surround Jerusalem we put a mark over you Whatever has left you will not return. Go and return with your testimonies. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You've not given your heart to the Lord inside and outside. Please remain standing, everybody. This is the greatest miracle. God brought you here because you are part of the great army that God is raising. I want to give you an opportunity, or you've given your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at that lady. Please. Um, take her somewhere. School of ministry students. Let me see two of you. Two school of ministry students. Lift your hands now. School of one and this lady. Please two of you. Go and minister to her quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now I want to give you an opportunity. Listen to me. I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. This, is, this altar call is for two categories. One, those who have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Number two, those who are one leg in and one leg out. This is a call to take the other leg in. Praise the Lord. The Lord is calling you right now. You've been born again, but you found yourself walking in ways that are not of God. And you want to have a new start. As we begin to celebrate inside and outside, please, we're out of time. I want you to rush out right now and come. Don't be ashamed. The Lord is giving you a new beginning. 
the Lord is speaking, giving you a new beginning. Do we have people like that? Don't be ashamed. If God is speaking to you, please come out. God bless you, sir. I see you coming. God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate them. They are coming. I appreciate them inside and outside. Koinonia is your sacrifice. I appreciate them. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just come and line up here. God bless you. Keep clapping. It's your sacrifice for their salvation. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let anybody stop you. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Keep coming. Even when we start praying. I see them coming from outside. Thank you, Jesus. For your glory. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who are here, I salute you for making this decision. The Bible says, no man who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. The Lord brought you out by himself. Hallelujah. Lift your hands as we pray together. It's my ple pleasure and privilege to lead you to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Say after me, dear Lord Jesus. Oh, daddy is giving his heart to the Lord. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Bless you. You came and you did not just find healing and deliverance, but you found salvation. And being the head of the home, your whole family will find salvation. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you, unable to help myself. I've heard your word tonight, and I believe. I make Jesus Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare, according to God's word, that I'm saved, I'm free, I'm delivered, I'm a child of God, Holy Spirit, come and live in me, make me a sign and a wonder, I denounce sin and Satan, I receive grace to live the victorious life, in the name of Jesus, let me pray for you, Father thank you, you brought these ones by your power and by your grace, may they never remain the same. I set them free that they be delivered from every oppression of darkness. Let habits be broken in the name of Jesus. I pray that they will have an, a hunger for God that nothing will quench in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Thank you. We celebrate you. Please just follow the ushers. They will have your details. And you'll be having a meeting with Pastor Jakes by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Follow the ushers. Write down. God bless you. Okay, please. Pastor Jakes is emphasizing. Many of you, if you brought somebody and he gets born again, please know that you are part of the follow-up. Bring them five on the dot so that we can have some time to talk with them, get them filled with the Holy Spirit and just direct them on what to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just give me a few minutes and we'll be out of here. You're worshipping with us for the first time. This is Koinonia. I'd like you to jump out. God brought you here by His grace. Inside and outside, run like a blessed man in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Those of you who invited them, God bless you. Let blessings never come, stop coming to your life. Koinonia, is this how you will clap for them? Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We love you. We're happy to see you. I'm happy to see great faces. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. This is Koinonia. Put together by Eternity Network International. Where you blessed tonight. You will never be the same. Never, never be the same. Hallelujah. Thank you. It's our goal to bring everyone into a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit that you hear the word of God that will prepare you to be relevant in the prophetic agenda of God and to equip and empower you to be an we believe you have been blessed by this message for additional information you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore ENI. You can 
also download our messages on www.foreshared.com. Turn to Network International, duplicating the fullness of God's life on earth.